welcome. What's up? Well, happy Monday. Glad to be back with you guys for Game Changer. We took the week off last week and uh, regrouped, reset, and uh, had a little trip. And uh, but we're glad to be back with you guys. And how appropriate! I was thinking on the way in, and then uh, our GM here actually said it to me. The exact thing I was thinking. How appropriate today we would start seasons change because the weather's changing here in Florida. Busting out jackets. It's cold. Slow moving. Slow moving. Just want to stay Is that in cold? Bed. Is that cold or old? <laughs> I think it's a combination. Okay. Of both. All right. So hope you guys are ready to to jump in to seasons change. You know, um, I mean, just on the surface. Just on the surface, you know, it's uh, just, you know, the obvious is the weather. The obvious, you know, there's there's the seasons and we don't get we don't get too many. Um, a couple of seasons are really long in Florida and then a couple of them are like transitions, <laughs> you know, just really quick. But um, I know other parts of the country, it may be the flip side. You may get, you know, a, uh, a long winter and maybe not much of a summer. And um, but seasons definitely change. But. The seasons that you know, I was thinking about, maybe just kind of just kind of kicking off, um, you know, just um, the podcast series. Is we're looking at the times of life. I mean, you and I've been married now, uh, going on twenty nine years this coming year, and um, you know, three three children that are uh, now all out of the house, and <clears throat> and even moving on in relationships and in parenting and marriage and so forth, and um, and ministry their careers, things like that. But we looked at, you know, seasons where you, you know, you're, you know, you're, you're a newlywed or seasons where, you know, you go through, you know, the time when you're, you're, you're so busy raising, you know, children that are small in school and your whole, you, you know, you're fixed, fixated around the soccer and the school and the extracurricular activities. And then you're, you know, then, you know, in so many things. And then now we're moving into a, you know, a season um, or we've moved into a season of empty nesting, even though we're really young, for that, <laughs> right? Yes, Can we are. <laughs> we are. Come on now. Eventually, you can't say that anymore. But like, people are like, "No, you're not young. We're not young. We're just young for empty." Nest. In our opinion, we're young for empty nesters, but we can still do stuff. You know, um, this is just a lot of seasons in life, and you know, um, that's one aspect and one way to look at it. And then, of course, there's there's the seasons in God, and I think those are connected as a believer. Your life and your walk with God obviously are one and the same. But you know, looking at the seasons that we walk through, you know, the tough seasons, seasons of grief, seasons of, you know, frustration, seasons of disappointment or struggle. And then there's seasons where you're on the mountaintop, where you have seasons of blessing and seasons of, and again, you know, it's not all predicated blessing. I think that we live a life that's blessed, but there's certainly seasons. And uh, we're going to talk about those this week. And, um, Amen. You know, I think people equate seasons for what's going on, like flowers blooming or things dying off or things falling from the trees. But when I was thinking about seasons, I actually thought about the emotions attached to those things. So when I was thinking of spring, I think it's like anticipation of new growth mm-hmm. and what's going, what's been dormant underground is going to come forward. Yeah. You know, summer, I was kind of thinking of the excitement of family out in the sun. You know, I felt like it was an exciting time. So so, and then I was thinking about fall is more relaxed, reflecting, thankfulness. And then winter is like, yeah, presents because Christmas is coming. So I was thinking more about um, the emotions attached to um, different season. seasons um, because I think each season there's a different anticipation. Um, and so that's kind of how I was thinking, you know, when we were you know, preparing or thinking about this, this series, mm-hmm. I started thinking more, more than an external, more about what I was feeling internally, because I think even that you're like today, it was cold. So it's kind of like, Oh, I don't want to get out of bed. I don't want to get motivated. I don't want to get out. You know? So I think it's one of those situations where I think that there are also seasons. We have to be careful not to allow the season we're in to attach emotion, emotions that will drive us down a wrong path path outside of maybe what God's trying to teach us in that season. So, and, you know, I'll, I'll mention it probably, you know, regularly because I'm a really big um, believer in emotions. Where our emotions go, that's where we follow, right? So wherever our, we're, we're fixed at, wherever we're focused, our emotions are going to go that way. But if we're not careful, we'll let our emotions take our eyes off of the purpose, the plan, 
what season we're in, and we'll allow our emotions to direct our path and instead of allowing our focus to direct our path. Yeah, and you can move those over to this to the to the main. Yeah, right there. I'm going to do both, but yeah. So I want to just start off, and Diana's right, and so this is going to this week is going to generate, you know, um, a, a lot of thoughts for a lot of different people, and it's going to mean something for us all. And I think that here's the great the great news. The great news is it's all right. It's all good. Right. And, um, so let me just say this, you know, something that, that I think we definitely need to, as we kick off this, um, this topic on seasons change, you know, the one thing somebody says this, you know, and they're right. The one thing that you can bank on that will always be consistent is change, right? There will, there, there will always be change. And the more you do for God, the more, you know, the more that it seems like things around you change. Can I just, can, can I make a really important, it's word. So I mean, it's, it's not me, it's not an opinion, but I think sometimes we forget because we talk so much about change in seasons that we don't, we don't remember that God never changes. So you go, wait a second, you're, you're, you're telling me that there's going to be more change when I'm plugged into God. And it's because that God's bringing you to him. You know, I mean, like, if you, if you think about this, we're, we're born now because of the, the sin of Adam and Eve. We're born away from God, so to speak. And then he, we, we walk this journey in life, the ups, the downs, the lefts, the rights. He's drawing us to him. So we're, we're constantly going through seasons and times and days and weeks and nights of change. But he never changes. And so, you know, one of the things I think I want to I want to put out there regardless of where you are and what how this speaks to you is don't pick up you know what God has overthrown the, in the in the seasons of change in my life when God I've learned this when God burns up and he overthrows a thing whether it's an you know an opportunity you know a business you know land you know investment relationship a job anything else that God's told you not to touch you know, don't, don't self-select, and there's the key, right? Don't self-select the parts that you think are good or, or, or salvageable, right? Um, and I'm reminded of Saul, and, I, and I'll use the word for this in 1 Samuel 15. God commanded Saul. Now, keep in mind, this is one of the things that got Saul, you know, thrown out as king and where David was ushered in. So, you know, God commanded Saul to destroy the Amalekites, kill everything, he said, not some things, but he told Saul to kill everything. And so you can't take what God has told you to kill into this next season. I'm going to say that again. You can't, you can't take what God has told you to kill into this next season. You have to pass the, the king test, right? When God gives a command, he, he tests the character of our heart. And I'm going to tell you that all through seasons of change, you and I are going to notice this is going to be something that the enemy uses to try to to, uh, you know, to, to compromise because look, he, if he, he may know there's, there's people maybe, you know, young enough in the Lord that he can maybe take them off, off, off track and talk them out of it. But there's, there's some that are much too mature for that. He knows it. He may not be able to talk you out of that thing for God, but if he can talk you into compromise, if he can talk you into doing part, you know, or, or not com- completely doing what God told you to do. So when God, kick, you know, gives a command, he tests the character of our heart and as a person of influence, right, in the king test, that God has set over an assignment, which is you, that he wants accomplished in earth, right, our character is tested by God to see if we're going to follow him or adhere to the voice of people, the voice of convenience, the voice of familiar, the voice of comfortable. So don't follow, you know, popular beliefs. Submit to God's instruction. Kill everything. Don't hold on to what you think is right. And Saul failed this test. We saw it, right? And let me tell you something. I can't judge him. Because I, you know, it's not that he failed it on something that looked bad. You know, he, he, what he thought, he did it with what he thought was valuable. So what do you value the most? You know, God's instruction or the opinions of people. And I think that that's going to be something you're constantly going to have to be tempted with when it comes to change. You can't carry, can I just say this, where God's taking you, you know, and where God's taking me, we can't carry what were yesterday's baggage into that place. There's things that God wants us to lay down and not pick up again. Amen. And I believe this is a word for our life and it can help us, you know, um, so overthrow the things that he's overthrown in your life. I'm going to say that again, overthrow the things that he's overthrown in your life. Don't carry extra weight. Don't carry extra baggage into the next season. He wants us to let go of the past and release our faith for the future. Amen. That's good stuff. That's, that's good. Yeah, Lord. What do you think?
Don't, that doesn't mean you can let go of me. He's, he wants you to carry me into me. I saw your the look on her face. She's like, maybe that means. No. no. <laughs> you know, I think sometimes when we're going through those things, th- that season of of decompressing or or uh, you know dropping off those things that are that are on us those weights or those things that God's uh, you know is dropping calling the kids us. off at the pool. <laughs> I mean, no, it, it's what it is. It's a form of it's a form of letting go of the waste, the things that are holding you back. But go ahead, I won't. I'll, I'll leave that alone. I, <laughs> I will leave that alone. My bad. I, Couldn't help it. I can't even. Go ahead. So you said in the seasons yeah. of decompressing, and letting letting go. Go ahead. Um, you know, sometimes don't forget, and it, that's not a bad thing. Sometimes it's just letting go of the old so that we could grab a hold of the new. Our pastor uh, spoke a message on tithing, but he was talking about letting go of the 10%, and then if you have your hand gripped, it doesn't allow it to be open to receive from God. And I believe the same thing, that if we're weighted down with other things, it, it prevents us from being, being able to pick up the new things that God has for us in this season. So I think it's really important, you know, to examine those things, you know, and determine, is this a season where God's having me let go of some things? And that's not a bad thing. Sometimes there's just different seasons of life. I mean, I can think of some specific friends that they were, that if I see them now, it's like awesome, but it just seemed like there was a season that we were closer and tighter knit. And, um, you know, sometimes it's because, you know, maybe we're just busy or whatever, but then we reconvene, you know, we get back together with them. It's like no time has passed, that there's seasons that God will take you through and even connect you with, and you might be part of someone's season. So also recognizing that you are maybe part of someone's season, and there might come a time that they're, they've they grown. Hopefully, if you're a person of faith, that you've encouraged them, and you God's used you to strengthen them and, and bring them into a new season, but there's going to be seasons that people kind of come and go out of your life. I think situations, jobs. I mean, I think there's a lot of different things, but I think it's, it's always goes back to, you know, being in tune with the Lord and knowing where he has you, you know, winter, when I think of Florida in the wintertime, the things that are planted are citrus, oranges, and strawberries. You can't plant those things in the spring or the fall, right? You have to, the winter, the wintertime is when it needs, it needs the cool. It can't be in the, the heat of the summer. So I think also knowing what season and recognizing that, and the only way, how do you do that? You have to be in the word of God to know kind of where you're at and examine and determine where am I at in this season? Mm-hmm. Um, I was doing some Bible study last week, and I was ta- it was it was a message on mountaintops and valleys. And th- here's the thing: knowing where we're at, what season we're at, but in the mountaintops, you're able to have a clear view. Like I, I picture myself on a mountain, and. Um, a couple years ago, last year, we went um, on a trip with my father before he passed. We were in New Mexico, and we, we took this, and I'm kind of scared of heights. I've gotten older. I've become wiser and realized that heights are not good. And so as we were going, I was kind of like anxious, but we get up there, and when you're up there, you see, you have a clear view picture of everything in front of you. And so when you're in the mountaintop, make sure that you're using that as the season, not just to celebrate, but you're taking a view of where you're at because they're going to come back down, right? You have to go up mountains and down mountains. But in the valley, that's usually where there's growth. That's where there's planting. That's where there's harvest. It's very hard to grow something in the top of a mountain peak where it's cooler and the sun isn't in the same, you know, doesn't shine the same way. So recognizing that and realize that we all have mountains and valleys, but recognize what season, but also examine what season you're in so you know what's coming next and that you can Mm -hmm. prepare for what's coming next. Yeah, and and I'd say this, you know, God uses people. So ask God, you know, well, let me say this. God has not given you an assignment that you that you cannot handle. I'm going to say it again. God's not given you an assignment that you cannot handle. And he works through and he uses and connects you to people. So ask God to connect you to the right people, those that are after his heart and those that are for you and who are sent and set by God to handle your season with you. You know, God wants his best for you. So don't look back and, and, and again, don't pick up what God's told you not to touch. And uh, so, you know, kicking it off that way, you know, um, an, an understanding and coming to the realization that, that seasons change. And I think it's important, Diana, and this is kind of when I, you're thinking of the, talking about the mountaintop thing. You know, what I saw there, what I got out of that is, you know, we don't know everything. And, it's, and if you follow God for any period of time, and if you haven't, let me just give you a 25-year. If, if he tarries and you're here and we're all here, and if you're walking with God in 25 years, can I just say it's going to be the same? He's not going to give you a lot of, of, of tomorrow in details. 
necessarily. Like he's just, he's a God that you, you know, he, he's going to want you to trust him. So my experience with walking with him is that, you know, we have to learn to trust him day by day. And, um, but what I saw, and I, when you were saying stand on the mountain, he may not give you the details, but he'll show you a glimpse. He showed Moses the promised land, you know, he'll show you. And that's sometimes what you can do on the mountain. You can see where you're headed and what that next season is going to look like and what to expect. So you can begin to believe for it, but understand this, seasons change. And it's important to know the season that you're in, not the season you're going into or that you came out of necessarily as much as it is to know the season you're in. You know, Florida, I mentioned a little bit ago, we can, we can be so ready, the whole tourist industry, right? The, the restaurants, you know, the, 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 you know, the, um, I mean, you know, the, the, the clothing, a lot of times that people wear, it's centered around or summer. Don't wear. <laughs> or, yeah, it's, it's centered around summer. You know, it's, it's based around summer. And the reality is, you know, we can, we can be so, we can be so fixated on preparing for the season, you know, that we, we call the main season that we, we don't understand the season that we're in. And reality is there's no summer without spring, you know, and there's, and there's no summer without winter. There's no summer without fall. And, and, uh, you know, so I want to, want to kind of encourage you to understand, you know, and the importance of knowing the season that you're in so you can do the work of the of the appointed season that you're in and be fruitful. I mean, that's the reality, right? God wants us to be fruitful, so it helps us to know what we're supposed to be doing now in our life because, I mean, you can tell me, hey, tomorrow, 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 but hey, can I just, can I just get some advice for now? And Ecclesiastes 8.6 tells us, for there's a proper time and procedure for every matter, though a man's misery weighs heavily upon him, and so seasons are time frames, and they're designed to bring us gr- into greater maturity and fruitfulness. And we need to learn to take advantage of the benefit that every season brings. I mean, there's there's benefits in every season, amen. And, we, and I think and I think the way to do that is we ask God. You know, we we ask God. Sometimes we we feel like we can't ask God, right? Because I guess it's not, you know, we can't see Him. Maybe because we can't sit down and just have a face to face conversation. I don't know. Maybe because you can't literally touch Him. You know, so I don't know the reason. I know that it's difficult for me as much as it is for you. But I think that we need to ask God to show us the right things to do during the season we're in and then do them. Ask for the blueprint, you know, which is something we're going to be talking about in the weeks to come. And um, But he's got a blueprint for this season you're in. And he's got a blueprint for the next season you're in. And if the crazy thing about it is if you could see the master plan, they're all connected. Amen. Yeah, so I mentioned kind of going through a season of hurt and past pain, and and I can relate to that. And the thing of it is, is a lot of times hurt and past pain shows up in in the form of anger. So we think we've dealt with something, and we put it in this secret compartment, right? Like when when you go on tra- when you travel and you leave your baggage in. Um, your hotel room, you have, you feel like you have this secret compartment that you're going to put things in that, you know, the maid service isn't going to see, right? And so we do that sometimes with some of the things that we've experienced. We put in this, what we think is a secret compartment, but the truth of it is, it's showing up, it's coming right. out. And it's usually not showing up in, you know, especially if it's a, it's a hurt or a pain, it's usually not showing up in hurt and pain. It's usually coming out most likely in some sort of anger or some kind of, you know, I, I believe that anger is a secondary emotion to, to something else going on. But I think here's the thing during those seasons when you, it's a good thing to recognize that and notice that. But here's the thing. God is the healer. Yeah. He is the healer. And the thing of it is, is we have to be vulnerable enough to put those things before him. And sometimes it's day by day. Sometimes we can go a week and we're, you know, we feel like we've got those things under control. And then, then we go through a season, like every day we're having to deal with that past hurt. But here's the thing. There is hope in Jesus Christ. And he gives us the ability to overcome those things. But sometimes there's some practical things. I don't know what exact situation that is, but I think you got to identify what, what first brought on that that pain or that struggle or that hurt, you got to identify that and then kind of begin to deal with that through, you know, God's word. You know, maybe it's going to be through some sort of, um, you know, counseling or therapy. Maybe it's just, you know, connecting with a, a, a prayer partner, whatever that is. You know, I'm a real big believer that sometimes we can hide in shame that we've had these things or hide 
you know, for fear that you're going to be judged because you've experienced these things. So I think it's really important to, you know, whatever that is, make sure that you're addressing that. Because even though it feels like it's in this hidden compartment, I think it'll come out. And so I think it's really important to deal with those types of things, those deep seated, rooted things, because it holds us back from experiencing the fullness of walking in, in the fullness of walking in God's joy of, you know, and so maybe that's it, finding joy in salvation, finding joy in, you know, the moment you're in, in spite of the pain, in spite mm-hmm. of the hurts. So I, mean, I think I've gone through seasons where, you know, I've, I've experienced that and, you know, thank God, you know, he was with me, you know, because sometimes I felt very alone in those seasons. You know, it's interesting, even the phrase that uh, Diana just almost ended that uh, comment with, I've gone through seasons, you know, and if there's anything, I guess, that could be, there could be encouraging that you need to hear today and I need to hear today is you're going to go through this season. You know, um, you've gone through seasons and when you're in the middle of those seasons, sometimes you felt like you would not be able to make it through, but you made it through. And, um, you know, uh, in John 15, the Lord tells us his goal and his goal for our lives. And this is the goal for every season, you know, that we bear much fruit. In verse 80 says that we show ourselves to be disciples, that when we bear much fruit. And, you know, um, it was a comment uh, by somebody here on Facebook said, God prunes us uh, when he's about to take us into the new season. So that comment goes along with that uh, John 15, 8, because, you know, sometimes to bear fruit, we have to be pruned, right? We have to, we have to remove some things. We have to, you know, not carry things into that season. And that's part of the pruning process. And uh, so when we think of bearing fruit, sometimes we just think of the growth or the flourishing. But what comes before the flourishing is cutting off the dead things, right? Cutting the things that are weighing us down. And, uh, you know, keep in mind, again, seasons are time frames, you know, and uh, that are allotted for certain things to happen. And there's, there's fruit in every season. You know, there's, there's purpose in every season. And every season has its own characteristic, you know, uh, activities, you know, in nature. You know, seasons have one purpose, to bring maturity and fruitfulness. That's, that's you know, that's the purpose of seasons. Each season is needed to obtain the, the full harvest. I mean, you can't have a full harvest, you know, if you, if you cut out a season. I'm thinking of, you know, seasons in a butterfly really, really quick. You know, you have all those, those stages we talked about in the metamorphosis. But, I mean, if you cut one of those out, then you're going to have a deformed butterfly or a butterfly that's not able to reach its full potential. Maybe the butterfly has, you know, one wing or, you know, comes, you know, d- d- or doesn't make it through the season because every one of those seasons are designed for a purpose and to bring, you know, greater maturity and fruitfulness in our lives spiritually. Well, you know, last week um, I was talking with someone actually about pruning. And one of the things that we talked about is usually when you prune a plant, it's very ugly for a season. It's like you almost give up on it. Um, A few years ago, um, I had a plant. Is that what you're doing to our plant? (laughs) Because uh, our, our I'm not very why, good at is that growing our, things. <laughs> if my nature. son were watching right now, he'd be laughing because uh, my son has a green thumb. But um, actually, he's going to be the one I talked about. I, I posted something a long time ago on social media, but there was a plant. It was really ugly on our back porch. I don't know what happened to it other than apparently I didn't take care of it. And um, he came home in between um, one of his school breaks. And um, he nourished that thing back to life. I was like, I was like, my gosh, I thought that thing was dead. And somehow you revived it. Isn't that like the Lord? But pruning a lot of times is ugly. The plant, the end product, after you go in and start cutting things off, it's ugly. And it stays dormant for a season. And so sometimes you, maybe you're in that season of your life that you just feel like you're dormant. You've been beaten up and battered. You've been cut up. And you feel like you're dormant. But I would say, don't forget to fertilize. Don't forget to nourish yourself because you're going to come back stronger, prettier with fruit, right? So be careful what fruit we bear because I think you can, you, we could bear sour fruit, right? If we remain bitter in that season, when we, instead of allowing those, that pruning process to mature us and grow us and strengthen us and, and get our eyes fixed on Jesus, we can allow that pruning to turn us into bitterness, right? And so that when we come forth in, in that spring, when we come forth, we can bear bitter fruit versus sweet fruit. And you know, if you've been, if you've been damaged, I mean, you mentioned the story, our son took that plant that was, that looked dead. Mm-hmm. I mean, it looked bad. And he had to take it home because you almost tried to kill it again. Yeah, it's I think dead. He took it home. It's dead. <laughs> It's he took dead. one home, but he ends up, he, he, has, he, res- he, put, he put what was necessary into it. 
Um, and made it look good. I agree. You know, when I was thinking about fall too, um, I, I nor- that's some, a season where like all the nutrients in the plant is kind of going to its core. And so the leaves that are, you know, further out are drying up to fall off, right? So sometimes it's not about someone coming in and cutting you up. Sometimes it's you're just drying up and things are falling off that need to fall off you. Don't forget that they need to fall off. So you're changing all these colors and it's falling off. But again, it's, it's about bringing forth and bringing nutrients back to the core to withstand the brutalness of the winter. That's what fall is all about, right? It's about drawing back nutrients to the core so that we can withstand the storm that's going to come, the winter storm, the coldness, right? So that you can come in in the wintertime and you prune back those things that have dried up so that you're not wasting your, you know, wasting it on dead things. Like because it's the plant, if it doesn't prune it, it's still trying to send nutrients and in, into those branches that have already dried up, which is removing it from the core, so keeping that core strength. So it's it's pruning it so that it holds it so that in due season it's able to spring forth and Amen. flourish and be green and bear flowers or bear fruit or whatever it is. So if you're in a season where you feel like everything's drying up or you've been pruned, my gosh, that's so exciting to me. Like that, it's, It seems like that should be the end of the story, but that's like the most exciting part because get ready. What are you going to do to nourish your core in this season so that when this season passes, because it's, it's going to pass, the season's going to pass, how are you going to come out of it? Yeah. Amen. Tomorrow we're going to talk about make the season count. So don't miss tomorrow. Tell somebody about it. Mike? Thank you all for tuning in today. We hope you guys are enjoying it. We missed all of you guys, and we're happy to be back. If you guys would like, we have a daily encouragement text that goes out every single morning that you guys can opt into completely free. You can text the letters EZGC to the number 813-522-3356. To everybody that joins us live on Facebook and YouTube, we always appreciate you guys being here. Uh, But if for any odd reason you guys cannot make the live streams, you guys can catch up with us in two ways. Number one, you can always go to YouTube, search Game Changer Podcast Live, hit the subscribe button and hit the bell so you get notified because we upload the replay of each episode every single day. You can also keep up with us on your favorite podcasting platforms, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and Google being the biggest ones. Make sure you subscribe to us on whichever one you use the most. If you guys are listening or watching on replay, you can always tune into us live every single morning at 8.30 a.m. EST on Facebook and YouTube. Just search Game Changer Podcast Live and we will show up in your feed. If you guys haven't, we launched a brand new Bible plan last week. It is called What to Do When You Want to Quit. It's a five-day plan on you version. It is the featured Bible plan of the week. Make sure that you guys go subscribe to it, read through it, let us know what you think. And if you guys would like, we also have a podcast series from a few weeks back from this that you guys can also listen to, and it kind of goes along with the podcast series. So make sure you check out both of those. But thank you all for listening. We hope you guys enjoy the rest of your day. We'll see you bright and early tomorrow morning. And on that note, we out.